Alright guys, welcome back to another DJI video review. Today we're checking out the uh, relatively new Inwin D-Frame Mini. Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, D-Frame series from Inwin, this is their latest sort of smaller compact version. So we've recently been checking out the standard size Inwin D-Frame, so they're all the full size ATX, but this one is a, a special made ITX one. So it's relatively small, uh, it's relatively light, it's more for sort of uh, users on the go. Uh, if you're going to LAN parties, if you really like to, uh, display your gear off or if you're after a case that sort of looks apart to the rest uh, this is definitely the case you'll be interested in checking out so we've already done a quick system in this but um, before we sort of go over the system we've done we'll jump in and we'll look at the case uh, on its own and we'll go over sort of each component inside the case all right so before we actually build a system in the uh, DFRAM mini I'll just quickly go over sort of some of the features uh, who this is designed for and some of the gear you get with it so first off with Inwin uh, Pretty much they sort of come out of nowhere the last few years. They've been building a lot of sort of smaller, cheaper cases, but now they've come out with this D-Frame series. We've also had the, the two original D-Frames, the larger ones, and they've now brought out the cases like the S-Frame. Uh, that's that crazy uh, frame that's been, I think, bent four, 14 times, which looks really cool. And they've also got the 904 series. We've also got a 904 Plus, and they look really nice as well. So first thing you notice with Inwin, um, I can't talk on all their cases, I've only had sort of their higher end models, but from, from what I've seen so far, they pretty much have the best looking boxes and the best packaging I've seen cases come in so far. So it's full, full color, um, everything like that, just not your standard, uh, your standard brown. Um, although that's not going to affect the product, but you always know you're getting a high product when the box sort of comes like this. Um, and let's have a look, so, and there's always the specs on the side, we'll go through those in a tick. And their cases always come wrapped in uh, in this nice fabric material, so it's not just the uh, the sort of clear plastic stuff which you pretty much have to throw away later on. This is a nice sort of uh, woven material, so it's nice that it, it came in that as well. All right, so once you open the box, you get the uh, the D-frame mini itself. Now we'll say how light it is. It is relatively light. It does say the complete weight is uh, seven kilos, but I would say that the box, the box is probably a kilo itself. So it does add, add a bit of weight, but it's relatively light, which is one good thing about it. And it does, uh, it does say that it's made from um, aerospace aluminium, and that's probably why the joins are done really good, and probably why the price puts it up a little bit. So bear in mind that this is over the $250 mark for an ITX case so it is going to set you back a bit but um, we'll go over some of the uh, some of the features this has and um, and see what you get all right so also something else you get is um, I really like I've noticed this on a few in cases with the bay that you get your gear or your screws in that it's like a nice sort of resealable kind of like a pencil case so that's just a nice little touch there it's not just like a, a ziploc bag that most cases come in that you sort of throw away Afterwards, then Inwin always do an exceptional job on their instruction list. So it's sort of like a little poster and everything is in color and it goes through every single thing. So that's actually in the different languages there, each one there. And then on the back, it has Engli English by the looks of it, yeah, of all the main things. So the first thing I'll note with this one, as opposed to if you've used the larger normal D-frames, they came all uh, dissembled, you had to assemble them. So this one here already came like this. So this does save a bit of time. You just pull it out of the box and it's ready to go. There were a few things I have to put together, but um, it wasn't very many at all. All right, so I just moved a little bit closer. Uh, we'll just go over some, uh, some measurements now. Uh, so bear in mind, this is ITX only. I have seen some people, uh, you can mod an MATX over, you can just simply move it over. Because there's no real, you don't use the IO shield, there's no dedicated spot where the motherboard has to go if you were to mod it, so you can slightly move it over. But um, straight from the manufacturer, it supports only ITX. So having a look at some of the dimensions, the height is, uh, is roughly 400 millimeters, the length is 500 millimeters, and then the, the depth is about to 240 millimeters so it is relatively small for the size and um, we'll go over some of the more specs uh your motherboard mini itx uh power supply can support up to 220 millimeters you can pretty much see here this is your power supply uh, area here so we've got an inwin i think this is an inwin uh desert fox whichever that one is 800 watt so we'll have a look and see and see how much room so it just slots in like this so this one here isn't the actual uh, largest power supply you can get. These are your more sort of squarish ones, and we've still got tons of room 
down the bottom and then your cables just go out underneath. So I would have no issues fitting any size power supply in there. So I kind of like it they've done that because um, you can still run quite a hefty uh, dual dual card, uh, sorry, dual GPU card with the uh, Mini ITX. So it's good that they've given you the length. They haven't made you use a real sort of compact uh, power supply. So it's got your USB 3, two of those and your HD audio. So this is it on the front. It looks pretty cool. Just like on the normal size D-frame, it just pop, pops through the front. Got your power button, your um, power LED there, two USBs, so it doesn't have any USB 2, only USB 3, your microphone, headphone, and then your hard drive LED activity light. And you'll notice that all the cables bar the, um, bar the HD audio come all sleeved. So if you have a look at those, if I can get that in the camera, they're really nice sleeve, even the USB 3. So there's not many cases where all the cables come sleeved. All right, so it has two so it has two PCIe slots. So if you have a look in the accessories box, you'll notice that this is your sort of PCIe riser. So this is what secures up into here. It just uses two standard screws, and that goes up there like that. If we can get a better look at that, and then that's what holds your um, so it pretty much holds one card, one double slot card. All right, so moving on to the uh, the fan and thermal solution. So it supports a two by 120 millimeter fans at the bottom so we might actually screw this in now so this here screw this in so now this is what holds either your two fans or it can hold a uh, a radiator so I, ha I have actually done a quick system in this case before i just wanted to get the feel on um on how this sort of went together before reviewing it but i will be doing another system I did do normal flexi tubing with that one, but I might do a rigid loop with this one. All right, so that's how that goes like that. So if you get a stand back, so that's simply your two fans. Just go in, in the bottom there, they push an insecure in there, and you can actually put a uh, standard 240 millimeter radiator, and then that can go up to your CPU, and you can use an all-in-one for that as well. Um, and also the CPU heatsink can go up to 165 millimeters, so that's simply the depth of that can't really measure it from this because that's without a motherboard so if you have a look at that i would say that's probably about right as well all right so just moving on we'll just have a look at the um side panels it comes with if you're familiar with the d-frame it comes with the tempered glass side panels so these just simply push on here like this and once they go on uh, bear in mind these ones on the d-frame mini they're much thinner than the uh than the original d-frame so I will stress that if you are pushing this back on the on using the backside and there's cables down there, please do not sort of force it down like sometimes people do with standard size panels because they have a fear that this could sort of crack quite easily. All right, so that's that one on there, and it gives it a nice tinted look. And then also the same one just goes on the back. So we'll just have a look at the. Um, clearance for the cable so there's not much clearance on the back so once you put the side panel on you only got about 2.5 centimeters for cable management but one thing they do give you to help you out with that is that they give you a heap of these little uh these little tie down clips so they're giving you sort of areas on the back where you just sort of screw this in you put your cables through you screw it through and then you can do an, another one and so on so they give you about a one, two, three, four, five, six. So they give you about seven of those. So that's good as well. Um, another thing they give you in the bag, as well as all your screws, you get like a really nice cloth. So that's the cloth there. And it's also got in wind on the side there. So I can only assume that this is just to clear the side panels because they do get a lot of fingerprints. So it's really nice that, um, that they do include that. All right, so moving on, we'll actually take this back off. And we'll have a look at how the uh, how you add hard drives into the system because you're probably wondering how you'll do that. So straight away, there's no support for a CD-ROM drive. The original D-Frame did. It was much larger, but for this one, there's no support as well. Uh, actually, for this one, there is no support. So to install hard drives in this one, it will take either three SSDs or three standard uh, mechanical hard drives. It won't take three at once of the SSDs and three of the hard drives, which makes six. So it'll only take three at, a, at one time. So what you do is you simply just, it's good how I like with these uh, D-Frame series is 
nearly everything they use uses thumb screws. So as for the uh, the fan mount down the bottom, and also the uh, the uh, hard drive bracket. So they have three of those. So they just get spaced out evenly. One goes there, one goes there, and one goes there. I think that looks really cool because then your cables just slot through here for either your hard drive or your SSD, just like that. And then one down below. So you really don't see any of the any of the cables at all. So we've got a few hard drives. So we'll probably do one SSD and two hard drives in the build in the build we're doing. So they just simply sit on there. There's screw holes underneath. So that's how an SSD would look just like that. So it's a great way to show off your SSDs as well. And then if you've got a mechanical hard drive being a little bit bigger, they've got the holes further apart. And then a mechanical drive would sit just like that. And you can really see how the cables just go straight and you don't see any cables at all. When you look down there, it just goes straight through to the back. So that's really nice how they've designed that. All right, so there's not really too much more to talk about this. Um, I guess once I start installing some gear, then once that's done, I can go over it and show you sort of how everything looked and all that. Uh, we'll just put a board in just to show you, well, I'll, I'll just rest it in just to show you how, I don't have a CPU in this, so I just gotta be careful I don't knock any pins. So the board will just simply go like, just like that. So you can sort of see that it does take up a, a fair bit of room. Once you've got your drives down the side there, your cooler down the bottom, and then I do like it that your video card can actually run down the sides. So if you do have a, a rather thick radiator along here, your video card can pretty much go straight down the side and it won't get affected by uh, by what type of radiator you do. So I do like that. Um, we'll just talk a bit more about some of the um, aesthetics they've done. So it's got these rubber sort of shock absorbers. I do sort of like those. It makes it a nice sort of platform and a nice sturdy platform to put it on and you can also put it sort of any way you like it's good for working on it won't scratch the case and it won't scratch the uh the sort of bench top you're working on i also do like the material it's painted in it does come in uh three colors it's actually on the box where it's stated that so it comes in a black red so i'm assuming i got the black red one where it's mainly black with some red accents it comes in red black where it's all red comes with the black accents and it comes in orange where the frame's orange and it comes with the blue accent. So it's pretty sweet how it comes in those colors. I think it might even come with more. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to check on the website for that. Um, another thing I like is the quality of this sort of the back plate. It's hard to sort of get that across, but it's a really nice machine bit of uh, aluminum. You can see it on the side there. And it's pretty much not like your traditional side panel that, uh, sorry, not side panel, your motherboard sort of tray you get in traditional cases, but it's a really nice uh, bit of aluminium they've used there. All right, so here's the uh, finished system here. So you can see how it actually goes in really nice. I really love the uh, the floating hard drive look. Uh, just bear in mind, you are limited to the three hard drives. So I've just got two, uh, two WD blacks and a SSD. So if you had this for a sort of mini gaming system, you want to take the LAN parties, it has plenty of drives you need. You've got your SSD, you could even run your two SSDs if you wanted RAID 0 and stick in a mechanical drive for your storage. Uh, so some of the other pros I liked about this, it's got a really nice handle on here, so you can just lift it up and uh, take it where you want. It does have a bit of a texture on the top to um, to help with the grip. Now it does come with the um, motherboard mount tool, so instead of having to sort of screw them in and, uh, and use pliers, it does come with that little tool, which is good. Now with your PSU support, as you can see, I've got your standard length one, the more squarish one, but it can go all the way down to bottom to your longest ones that you need. But having only a single video card, you're probably going to only be able to put in a dual uh, GPU uh, single card. So you're probably not going to need any more than, say, 800 watt in the system. Uh, so I mentioned the floating hard drives, which I really like. And if you like to show off your gear, this is probably one of the more more better sort of mini gaming systems around you can definitely see everything in it you can see the way i've got the rigid tubing in and around like that the only issue is sort of your res support is a bit hard i guess if you didn't want to have the hard drives here you could put a res here but then you're not going to really have any sort of stationary spots for your hard drive so it is limited for water cooling this is sort of one option i went with there's not going to be too many other options uh, to go with with water cooling uh, some of the cons, there's no uh, there's no CPU cutout, you know, behind the uh, the motherboard tray. There's no cutout there, so just bear in mind you are going to have to put your CPU block on or at least the back plate on before you put the, uh, the CPU uh, block on. Now, another thing I need to talk about is behind the motherboard tray. So I've actually taken the back panel off. I did have it on, but I've taken it off just to show you the enormous amount 
of cables that are behind here so I do have extensions on all the, the power supply cables but you can see that all of these do have to go sort of secure them back up I've done a few with the supplied uh, supply cables you get but um, it does take a while it's not just your traditional case so just throw them in the back and squish the side panel on you do have to go to a bit of effort to uh, to sort of uh, zip tie these down uh, tape them down with, or secure them down with the supplied um, supplied little um, cable ties there and you will get the back on bear in mind it still was a tight fit because this is this is quite thin here and you don't want to put too much force on once you get the cables down flat because you may crack the uh, crack the glass side panel but um I did manage to get this all in so um, and this is probably the most you'll probably have so if I can get all those in you will be able to get yours in you just have to take the time to uh, to get them in and we'll just put the um, put this side panel on just to show you that they are a, they are a tempered glass and it is kind of um, it is kind of tinted so you can see a bit there but um, once your system lights up you can see through it quite easily Alrighty guys, well that's it for this video. As you can see, this is a nice little system. Uh, just bear in mind, this isn't going to be uh, for everyone. The main um, main deterrence of this is going to be the price. It does retail for a bit of a 250 Australian. So for that size, uh, you always sort of seem to pay a bit of a premium for ITX because uh, see it, everything small inside a case is going to cost more. Uh, some of the higher end ITX boards do cost a lot and um, and this case being 250, it's not going to sort of uh, be in everyone's budget to uh, to simply make sort of a small system that can only fit, say, one video card or uh, or three hard drives. So, um, yeah, it's not for everyone, but um, the people who are, are interested in this, it does make a, a great little gaming system. Uh, there is a fair bit of expandability. Like, I did manage to fit in a full-size water cooling system in an ITX system, so there's not too many cases that can do that. I've still got plenty of room for a long, longer power supply. I've got about an inch and a half for a long video card. You probably won't get much longer than a 780 uh, GTX 780 Ti. Oh, sorry, it's GTX 780, but the Ti is the same length. Like I do have a full size, uh, a full size reservoir. I've got a 240 uh, radiator. So most people buying this case probably will just uh, stick with an all-in-one cooler. So you can see you've got plenty of room for that down the bottom. So I've just gone a little bit further to put some bits power water cooling in, just to show you sort of what can be done in a small size system like this and um, just bear in mind with the room on the back it's going to be tight so you do have to spend a bit of time working on the system but um, all in all I was very happy with this case especially for sort of how it's made uh, how, the, how well the joints are done the rubber mounts and the fact that you can just simply uh, if you want to fill it up you can just simply put it on its side like this you can even probably run it like that if you want because it's got the rubber the rubber mounts all around so it is nice they've done that and it kind of feels really durable as well when you're carrying, a, carrying it around so we'll have this on our next uh, GGF event in February 21. We'll have this on display with some other in-win cases. So if you're in the area, come along, check it out. I'll have this built up pretty much exactly the same, just like this. So um, yeah, come along, check it out. Just want to thank InWin for sending us this case to review. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.